Hey everybody, welcome back after a, sorry, long drought of no uploads, but we're here back with episode 22, I believe, of the Irrelevant Podcast, and we're actually going to do something different. We're going to go back to what we did on the first episode, where, well, the first episode with Jason, I must add, where we had a movie recommendation and we talked about a movie. So today, we are going to talk about Cidade de Deus or, as it is known in English, City of God, the 2002 Brazilian movie. Um, now, do you think I should um, like give an introduction about what it's about, just in case? Sure, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so City of God um, is actually a book, or it's like a writing, I believe, written in, I don't know when, but it was, it was a long time ago written by St. Augustine, one of the doctors of the church. And it is about how the city of God started out as this place that was really small. It was only between a few people, you know, that had like the, you know, that had the sauce. And then over time, it got way too big. The sauce got spread everywhere. And it just, you know, it erupted in chaos. And that is similar to what happens in the movie even though it is takes place in 60s Rio and it goes in through like the 70s and yeah and it follows the story of this one guy who grows up in the the slums which by the way city of god is the name of the slum he grows up in and how you know like how what life is like growing up there um how his like relations are with other people and how he can actually potentially get out so um Jason, what did you think of Cidade de Deus? I thought it was really great. I always like um, watching movies that aren't... Consi- well, I guess, I don't know how much critical acclaim this one got, but ones that are not like a blockbuster classic or ones you can just scroll on Netflix to find. It's like actual good movies that you've never heard of. So I've always liked watching that. I also like watching foreign films too. So I know people have problems reading subtitles, but I think it's because people just don't fucking read at all. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I thought it was I I didn't expect it to be as dynamic um as it was and usually like when you see like one of those kind of stories you've seen them all but I like the way that they did it on this one so Yeah, um like you were saying about the critical acclaim this movie actually is quite critically acclaimed. Some people consider it to be like one of the like greatest movies ever made even. Mm. <laughs> um which, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I have some gripes with it that I want to talk about yeah. eventually. But, um, no, I, I think it is it is great. Um, the one thing that despite... I looked up afterwards is that a lot of the shit was actually fictional. Like, the the characters and, um, I think... Right, it is it is loosely based off of real events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, I mean, I've asked, like, Brazilians, like, when I went to Brazil, and, like, I, because, you know, they, th- they thought it was really cool that I that I liked City of God. I asked them, I was like, is all that stuff, like, true? Like, did stuff like that really happen? They're like, yeah. I mean, that's what life was like growing up in, in the favelas, man, you know? God. Yeah, I can, I can imagine all that shit happened. I was just, because I think um, the one that wasn't real, which was surprising, was the guy that was the photographer, right? He, like, the main... The main, the main guy? guy? I don't think he was a real person. Really? Yeah. Okay. Which is weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, because you, you'd think that like some other, because he, he honestly seemed like he could be a real person. Like he was really just kind of calm and like just kept to himself and yeah. stuff. Because, but like who you, yeah, like who, who do you think isn't real would be like Lil Z or somebody like yeah. that. I, I can't remember. The, right. It's been a minute to, since I've been looking at it, but I don't remember the characters that were real, but you'd think that like, the story about a photographer that became famous by taking pictures of drug lords that no one else could get close to. Like, that'd be a pretty big deal. I didn't think that'd be a thing that they'd made up. I think, actually, like, the concept is real. I just don't think the actual person himself was real. I think they said it's like the actual, based like that... off of other photographers or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, because, like, I'm fairly certain that there have been people like that. That like they they made it big because they could get pictures like yeah. that in the favelas that like regular you know Rio dwellers couldn't get. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, like you're saying, like the actual character United obviously is fictionalized. Uh, Buscape, which I actually, I really like him as a uh, main character, even though like he doesn't really have much to do with the plot until later in the movie, you know? Yeah. But even at the end of the day, he doesn't really have that much. Like, he, he doesn't really have that much effect on the plot. Like, he's kind of honestly like us, like, where we're just kind of, we're just kind of watching, you know, like, the, the the rival gangs. And he, in a sense, is too, because he never really affiliates himself with one or the other. He's just kind of watching it, and he doesn't really want any part of it, right? Yeah, and that's actually kind of why he his character resonated with me a little, a little bit, was because it reminded me of, like, um... <clears throat> like reading those young adult novels back in the day and they wrote the main characters kind mm-hmm. of like that like they really didn't have <laughs> super too much to do with like they were just pretty much observers to all the bullshit around them or they always get stuck in situations that they had to get out of but <laughs> yeah that's how they kind of wrote yeah. them and that's and that's why i like his character like it's like he just was the guy that ended up in a bunch of shit and had to figure his way out of it but he didn't really I mean, obviously, in the story, his biggest impact was getting those like those pictures. That's probably the biggest. Yeah. Um, but well, actually, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You could go. No, nah, this was going to say. I think that was just his biggest impact. Um, but like when the impact actually did happen, because you know, like when he actually took the pictures of Lil Z, who is technically like the the villain of the movie, if you could put one right. on there. Um, when he actually got pictures of him and his gang with all of like the rifles and the guns and everything. And and he thought that he was gonna be fucked, but then he didn't realize that like Lil Z thought that that was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was a nice little little twist. Yeah, they there there's a lot of really fucking funny moments in that movie. I mean, it was brutal, and the fucking <laughs> yeah. right, and like it it could balance that really well. Yeah. Like I remember when Lil Z, and obviously there's gonna be spoilers for this, by the way. I think that should just be a given. Um, I love when when Lil Z goes and like attacks. I think it was um. What was um Seo Georgie's character's name? I don't remember. Remember he would, he's the guy who like he fucking <laughs> Lil Z asked him to like strip down in the middle of the club and just like held him at gunpoint. Oh yeah, dude, what the fuck? Because he was jealous he couldn't get bitches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I thought that that was hilarious, and then and then and then like Seo Georgie's like, why didn't that guy just fucking kill me? And then like he turns around and then the, like it zooms over to Lil Z and he's like. Why didn't I kill that fucking guy? <laughs> I thought that that was great. Yeah, that was a good one. Like it just, it has, yeah, like it has those little moments like sprinkled here and there of just like, oh, that's cool. Or like, that's funny. Or that's just the little bits and like nuggets of like, there's all those like little golden nuggets here and there that I really think do make the movie that if otherwise, like if they didn't have them, I think it would just be like another generic, you know, gang movie. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the the most difficult thing in these types of drug movies or gang movies. Like if you don't have like really relatable characters or not even relatable, just like big personalities in any of the characters, not just like the stereotypical like boss mentality or cruel mentality, but like actually has like some comedic arc and can do other things besides just doing gang shit. I think that's just what makes it great because that's the cool, I mean, that was kind of the cool thing to me about, and we don't have to talk about it, I just I think as a quick segue for Narcos, is I just like the characters, because I, I never liked gang shit, like I hated mob movies, I didn't watch Goodfellas or all that other shit, because I thought it was boring, because it, it was the same fucking shit, the characters were all the same, whatever, but that's why I liked the Narcos, and then it also it's what mm-hmm. I like in this movie, too, is that like, I like the dynamic that they give the characters, because, <laughs> I mean, there I mean, there are portraying to be real people that how it how easy it is to get caught up in that lifestyle and obviously that trope has been done a million times the the really smart fucking kid wants to go to a ivy league school but he's stuck in the hoods and tries not to get killed all that bullshit like that's also been overdone but you know just the how versatile people can be really because like in the beginning of the movie like they were all criminals but you could tell the ones that were really doing it for the desperation and the ones who were just psychopathic. So that was the greatest distinction, <clears throat> excuse me, the greatest distinction. Right. Right. And like I said, that's like what makes them actual characters and not just like these fucking bots, yeah. you know? Cause like if these were just, Oh, like it's just ruthless people. It just is horrible. It's like, then there'd be nothing interesting about it, which is actually, um, like you were saying, like, you could tell who was, like, just a ruthless fucking killer and who was doing this because they actually, you know, were, were poor and needed this. It was, like, Lil, Lil Z. He was just, like, 
he, he was honestly like poisoned in narcos like he was just he's like i just want to kill like, i don't think they're the he just, same was because, just ruthless i mean i don't i mean it's been a minute since i've watched yeah, well it, i mean they're not the like, same you could tell that little but... like he had more insecurity and that's why he was the way that he was poisoned he was just a fucking that was his job he was just stone cold oh right yeah that that that, that is a good point because like i mean like you said, Poison is probably getting all the fucking bitches, but... Um, he seems asexual. Lil Z. He gives me asexual vibes. Who, Poison? Yeah. Does... No, I definitely see him like he's going to like the strip club and like with salsa music and all that stuff. Well, they and... never portrayed him that way. He always was just the guy that killed. Like, he didn't have anything else to him. Like, no home life, no family, no friends, no girlfriend. He was just there to kill. I guess, but like, I just kind of assumed like when he's whenever he's not working for Pablo, he's just doing that on the side. Because oh. remember when when he um spoilers for narcos, by the way, sorry guys. Pretty much everything we're gonna talk about is gonna be spoilers, but whatever. Like remember when he when Steve and like um and all like the other agents like go and like they shoot up the club and he was in there, remember that's how he died. Yeah. I just I was like, Oh yeah, that seemed pretty accurate. Might have been. That's just the vibe that he gave, but I think he's a lot different to little because he well, I guess in the beginning he thought he he was just doing it for a thrill, because he really wanted to be a gangster. But he just liked killing. That's cu- but then yeah. like he just as he he realized that like he didn't actually have any true friends and he was not attractive, so he couldn't pull any fucking ladies and he was awkward and didn't know how to dance. So he that's right. Kind of so tell. he was like, all right, what? Yeah, he was like, what the fuck else do I do? Yeah, exactly. Like, He's like, what do I do? I can't kill somebody and everyone else is having fun. I'm standing here like a jackass. Fuck these people. I'm gonna embarrass I, this guy, make him take I his lo- clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like may as well do something that makes me look cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that that was that was his whole uh, Yeah, deal. that's actually you actually like brought up that to me that I didn't really realize initially was that yeah, he is just kind of like insecure and like he's just you know he's like fuck. Like he's just kinda of having like an existential crisis a little bit. <laughs> Not to be too um, pompous, but, but I think like that whole flex culture or that whole gang culture, like you have to have a certain level of insecurity to really value those types of things. Cause you know, if you have to show people what you have and not what you are, then you don't have any personality. All oh, right. Like if you have to show people what you have by showing yeah. them instead of just by just being you, then yeah, yeah. you know, you have fucking nothing. And that's not but... even like a fucking, like me preaching to be humble that's just like you can have nice shit, just don't be fucking annoying about it. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember when he's talking to Benny, who Benny I think is, is just awesome. Yeah. Um when 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 he's like trying when the, it's like Benny's um his his like go away party and then he's like, Come on, hey, we, we gotta do this with like the with, with, with like the deals. We gotta close the deal with this thing, we gotta worry about this thing, we gotta tell these people to not do this, and he's like, dude. Just, like, have fun. We're not doing business tonight. And then he's like, no, 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 no. No, uh, Carrot, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a son of a bitch. And he's like, you think everyone's a son of a bitch, dude? Like, just... And I love the line. He's like, you need a girlfriend. <laughs> That's true. Right. So, Benny, I forgot to say, is, like, the... He's... He and Lil Z were, like, childhood best friends. And, um... Yeah. They, um... Yeah. Yeah, they were more or less like the the co owners, I guess, of City of God. And then, um, well, further yeah, so like Benny, to, to run the streets, like they did, not like the actual owners of it. Right, they were more or less like the two bosses. Yeah, they, those are territory. And then, yeah, and then Benny, <laughs> Benny fell in love with um, with uh, what's her name, Angelica, who, um. Buscape had a crush on Buscape is the main character, sorry. And then um, he was like, "Yeah, I want to be a fucking hippie and live on a farm and just, you know, just be with this woman for the rest of my life." And then <laughs> fucking Lil Z's like, "What are you talking about?" I thought that was hilarious, and also, well, actually, that that brings up um, one of the actual gripes I have is like, I'm like, why did like Angelica like after Benny dies like. She's, like, not in the movie anymore. I'm like, what? I don't know. I, I think it's because like, they didn't want to... My theory is they didn't want to run it 
too much longer like they were everything was coming to a climax and you could see everything unraveling i think her story was more of a side plot especially since it was fictional like it didn't really have anything to do with the main shit that's true that's true um well actually yeah actually the more you bring it up like that would have been really fucking cheesy yeah. if Buscape just ended up with Angelica in the yeah, end. Yeah, that's a very American ending, so I'm glad they didn't do that. Well, yeah, they're not American. Well, so. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't cave into doing it that way to get more reach. Yeah. Um, I still didn't like Angelica. I thought she was, she was like, a cool girl. You know, like, the kind of girl, like, yeah, she seems like a cool person. Yeah. And also, like, her, her first boyfriend, I thought was just, like, a fucking, oh, the like... the ginger, the Jewish guy? <laughs> yeah, that dude was a fucking coomer. <laughs> oh man. man, I thought it was funny that they I made him. It... Then they make didn't they make him do like the bookkeeping or some shit? Yeah, because like he knew how to do math and yeah. shit, so he would do all of like the accounting and everything. <laughs> and then um, no, but I I remember after he like Angelica broke up with him, he just like was just coking all the fucking time yeah i noticed that subtlety <laughs> yeah I, I i thought that was hilarious um but um also like like you said there's some like you know there's a lot of like this cool like little nuggets here and there and it's funny there's a lot of funny like shit like like me jason and i guys we quite a few moments we laughed out loud especially with with like the banana and <laughs> you remember yeah. that yeah, that was really fucking funny. And then he like runs outside, like, "Good fuck, dude, 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 please, I need, I, give me your fucking pants." <laughs> that was great. But there's also a lot of moments in the movie that are really fucked up. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a couple. The one that was yeah, fucking brutal shit is the dude that kills his fucking girl that was cheating on him and just buries him, buries her in the bedroom. <laughs> Yes, it was a dirt floor with the fucking fuck banana. It. Yeah, yeah, may as well dirt floor. So the one that was that was depressing. Funny was the the yeah. guy. I don't remember his name, but he was one of Lil Z's like henchmen. He was super fucking annoying. He just shoots him in the hallway because he was fucking like you talk too much. Oh yeah, he's like we almost died. We almost died. He's just like just shoots him. Like I don't want to deal with you anymore. <laughs> that was great. Well, in terms of fucked up, I think when. He realizes that the kids are, like, going... They're crossing the line and, like, stealing shit in the other territory they're not supposed yeah. to. And and then they, like, line them, they, like, the two of them up. And then he's, like, ask the one kid, like, hey, you, you gotta kill one of them. And it's, like, fuck. And then also he, like, shoots him in the leg. And no, he shoots him in the foot. And you see, like, there's just little kids, like, just being shot. Yeah. And they're, like, crying. I was, like, man, that's... that's That was traumatizing. Yeah, that was a brutal scene, making him choose where he wants to get shot. That was probably the most fucked up scene. It's funny about that, or that, like, it's like kind of shit like that, because yeah, like sure. they, there are a lot of times where movies portray like little kids to be like that. They're just in the fucking way of the story, and they don't know the the rules of the street or the code, so they just they have to do everything they can to make themselves look cooler and older. And it's just funny because like there's a lot of kids that come in um, <laughs> to where I work and do the same shit. They just like, yo, look at this thing. And they try to like just do their best to be really extravagant, but you know, they have no fucking social awareness. So I just, I was, <laughs> after I watched that movie a couple times, it's happening. I'm just imagining like what would happen if like somebody came in and like ordered them to choose where they get shot. <laughs> it's fucking brutal. Yeah, the kids did really seem like the kids in a movie are typically like the worst part, but the kids in this movie I thought were great. Yeah. They were really charismatic. I love like the the leader dude with like the the bangs and like the long hair. I thought he was really he was really cool. And when they all fucking shoot Lil Z in the <laughs> end, I, I, that was very that was very satisfying. Yeah. Um, the part um, that was like the cruelest irony was um, I I should have looked at the characters' names. The guy that he was the musician in real life, but he played the uh, the bus driver. Yeah, that's the that's the guy who remember like, um. Lil Z was like, wait, why didn't I kill that guy? Yeah, that guy. after he like raped his girlfriend. Oh, that, yeah, that was the same. I saw that. So that was the same guy. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, and he was like, he was in the army, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He, he was, was actually a, a sharpshooter, yeah. so like he would just fucking waste people left and right. But I thought the the cruelest irony yeah. was when like they go to, I can't remember. They were robbing the bank 
for money and guns, I think, or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, because they just needed supplies. Yeah, so they're robbing fight something, and then Z, yeah. he like shoots the fucking security guard because he just rushed out with a gun, and then like <laughs> that dude's kid ends up killing him in the end because he thought they were on the same team, but they weren't. <laughs> oh, right, because like yeah, because um, Sal Georgie didn't like remember who like like because he just turned around immediately after he killed the guy and then he realized that like that kid was there and obviously we didn't know that because we don't remember you know that scene well they did a flashback to it right but i'm saying like back when we were watching that you know we we would have never remembered that face oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like when it yeah i thought that was really nice and how he like enters in the gang that sucks he just like and then, just hated all the gang shit but he just wanted revenge for them killing his fucking family <laughs> no but what was so like sad it was so like Seo Georgi was like he was a good dude and then he makes a, he he breaks the rule once that he like cuz he made the promise to to carrot he was like I can do this I can help you defeat Lil Z but I'm not killing any innocent people and then like the one innocent person he kills like it it costs him yeah, in the end cruel irony Yeah I'm like you should have stuck to your rule dude <laughs> I don't know that one in that case it's like he's either you or him so it's just like I said just stuck in that situation but True. fuck man I I don't know I when I watch shit like this it always just <laughs> it's just like it's crazy the shit just can just happen like it, it surprises me that I mean obviously people try so there's like militias and there's vigilantes and there's groups that try but this the shit always is going to be here at the end of the day so you literally could go into these like slums and just kill everybody and then the next two years like you'll just have more problems again like it's just crazy how it never stops right and what was also really fucking funny but also really messed up was that when you realize like when it shows that like the guy supplying the who is supposedly from the black market giving the gang's guns is he's getting the guns from the police yeah. you know like I, I was like, what? I half expected a CIA agent to be there with some crates. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the DEA, yeah, the fucking just... DEA or whatever. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, there was also like, wait, what was the moment? Oh, the the moment when. When like you know he got when Lil Z is like, wait, why didn't I kill that guy? And he goes back to Sao Jorzy's house. And then his brother, like, sacrifices himself. Yeah. That was really sad. That was really sad. Yeah, I don't even know why he did that. And then, that. like, his... Right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's just probably just... Cause... Wait, actually, no, I think it was his cousin. Yeah, one of his family members. I don't remember. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I guess he just he just loved his family member. You know? Why would you go out with a knife? <laughs> well, I don't know. You can't go out with a gun. Like, where are you going to put that? He was just wearing, like, a t-shirt and shorts. Yeah, but, like, knives aren't that much smaller than guns. Like, if you can hide a knife, you probably can hide a pistol somewhere, especially, like, in your back. Eh. And, like, it takes you Maybe more time to run one, at somebody or... with a knife than it does to run at them, and or not run at them, but just pull out and shoot somebody. True. Especially when there's, like, fucking, like, True. 15 dudes with guns ready. That is true. And that was also really sad, like, when the mom was... Like, you know, because after her son dies and she's just there, like, like, I remember, I think it was you told me you were like, man, like, what would I do if like, I actually like, grew up in this? Like, like, like just, oh, my, my, my kids are involved in like this, this drug war, you know? I don't know. I, I consider myself highly pacifistic and not really confrontational in most things unless I have to be, but I've never also been in like a life or death situation. So part of me just like is so angry where it's just, I just want to fucking kill all of them and just you know, just to make sure that, like, this shit never happens again. The other part is just, like, finding the smart way or just to get out. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I have no understanding of that because I have not grown up anywhere near that sort of thing. It's a fun exercise um, to really think about and just guess what you would be like or what you'd do if you are in that situation. Would you run or fight or just die? <laughs> Right, and that's the other thing, because, like, this movie, while also entertaining and fun, it's, like, it also, like, it really does, like, like you just mentioned, ponder these really deep questions, you know, about, like, hope and, like, despair. It's honestly luck and, to yeah. me. Like, it, I mean, you can, I mean, obviously, like, you can give yourself the that 
taste of hope or if you have like divine intervention or protection or some spiritual thing but at the end of the day it's really just wrong place wrong time or if you're not fast enough to get something done or if you're sloppy you know i think it's just a lot of his luck so you think that's what the movie's trying to say no i just i think it was trying to simply just portray what life was like back in that day and just um all the nuances of it and and you know what happens when you know people or what happens like when your family member gets involved i think it's just it was trying i don't think it was trying to ponder a moral question it didn't seem like that was the direction it was taking i mean it can always do it without yeah you can intuitively figure that out but i don't think that was like their because you can tell when movies are really trying to push like a moral question like yes and it's so bad i hate movies like that so i don't think it was trying to do that yeah, like, you know, all those, like, movies that are, like, sci-fi about AI, it's like, what does it mean to be human? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can't ask that fucking question in the movie. Yeah, like I said, it's you a have lack to of just, subtlety. It's like a given. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but I remember, so, like, yeah, my gripe was kind of with Angelica. I kind of wish I would have seen, like, a more, like, more of her. And I was hoping that maybe Bouchkape and her would have some sort of closure. I don't know. But also, I remember, like, there, there's just, like, a point where I thought the movie was, like, kind of dragging towards the end. When? Like, I don't, it was, I don't remember. I think it was, like, when, like, a- after uh, Buscape gives the pictures, I thought that it was just kind of, like, when, 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 like, the, um, when Sarah Georgie teams up with Carrot and they're, like, robbing the banks, I don't know, something about it, I was just, like, Man, I'm not really waiting. Like I, th- I thought it was already it was just built up, and then it's like I don't know. Like I just felt like I feel like it was all unraveling at that point. Well, no, actually, when they get to the end, and it's like they have just the war. I mean, that would no, that was great. Yeah. But I saw like kind of the little steps leading up to that. I don't know. This is a little point, and also like um, I <laughs> I love the part when he's like with his buddy, who I don't remember. Like when Busca pays with his buddy. I don't remember what his name was. I don't think they ever really say, but it's just kind of like his like friend he's always with when they like try to go rob places. And then they're like, I couldn't, that, it was, it was such a nice lady. Sorry. I, yeah. I couldn't ask her to like, you know, I, I couldn't hold her at gunpoint. That that's, that's mean. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. I thought that that was funny. Yeah. They, <laughs> oh, and then when, yeah, and when they hitchhike with that guy and they're like, I knew for from the first moment that he was from Sao Paulo. <laughs> I just like how they were yeah. like, all they wanted was fucking weed. Like all this like crazy shit was going on. And they just wanted to fucking chill and get high. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like just hitchhike with a random yeah. dude. And they're like, hey, you like to smoke? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought that was funny. And then... Also, I remember when Lil Z got mad at that guy because he killed his girlfriend within like the the lines and and then he was like what and it was like dude it was my business like he said who cares <laughs> i like um that's the one thing that's always interesting for shows and movies like this is like the way they justify it and like the the like gymnastics that they do to just explain why or why not they didn't kill somebody <laughs> right did. um which actually like i don't want to go too far off so we could talk about this a lot because I know you you like to watch it. I I watched a little bit, um, of like more of to catch a predator oh, and shit. some of like the sh- the shit and like the the reactions were so funny. Bro, I can talk about this shit all night. It's so. F- I let me preface the the interesting thing to me is just like because before you never like when I grew up it was just pedophiles were like either like your gym teacher someone that you knew or just like these anonymous people on the internet that controlled some black market ring or they're just like the worst of the worst right but then like you see how they are in real life and they're just these like really dorky borderline autistic fucking just outcasts and the the overall theme is that it doesn't matter I mean you can argue back and forth whether it's a disease or not but the the one thing that is super clear is that it's just the compulsion is way too strong whether or not you have like moral judgment and it clouds it like the compulsion and the attraction is just fucking massive but just the shit that they say and the lies that they say and like the way they're so nervous it's it's just it's just one of those things like it makes you uncomfortable watching it because you can just 
you place yourself in that situation of like you're inevitably fucked and so you're watching somebody else go through that and it's just like damn dude how did you how did you get to this place yeah and like chris hansen obviously like you know he is like he is still respectable even though i mean it's like you know who wants to be fucking respectable to like these absolute like creeps yeah. but he, he does he's like why are you doing this and they're like oh no he's like what no i just i just well you know we could talk about this you know <laughs> um but i remember the and also props to the decoys that you know like the decoys that there's literally this per like this man and i know i've never seen a to catch a predator with a woman but i just i don't know if that exists but whatever like mo- all the ones i've seen have just been men apparently women are harder to catch and it's, like they're not as like reckless as the dudes are they do it more secretly that makes sense online at least that makes not sense. unless they're a fucking teacher <laughs> <laughs> right but um i just like props to these people that are literally there in front of like this dude who is like so ecstatic and so excited that he's going to be able to he that he thinks that all of like these fantasies are going to come true and he's going to be able to do all of these like horrible disgusting things and they're like holding their ground still acting as if like that they that they want to do it and stuff yeah. like that but then when, when when like the the predator's face goes from like, he's so excited because he thinks it's gonna actually go his way and then he figures out he's like being exposed on fucking national television he's like this <laughs> like i saw like this like like <laughs> Like the like the decoy's like oh I need, I'm gonna go get something from the fridge or something and then Chris Hansen comes out and he's like oh no 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 of course Hansen dude you know the fucking you know the worst one the one that was the best ever was the Indian dude that came into the house naked wait he did yeah it was the funniest shit I haven't seen that one dude you gotta watch this one yeah he like he fucking like stripped outside. He comes into the house naked and then Chris Hansen, because they see him do this. So like immediately he's like, put on a towel. Like, what are you doing here? All that shit. But the fucking DMS were insane. He basically wanted to like fucking like have like a cat involved or he wanted to like fuck a cat while she watched or some shit with a cat, dude. It was fucking hilarious. Okay. (laughs) But no, dude, I'm telling you the one, where like the fucking guy was like, oh, uh, that was so <laughs> satisfying. I, oh my god. One, dude, one, one guy is like, do you know who I am? And he's like, no. He's like, I'm Chris Hansen. He's like, no, you're not. He's like, yes, I am. He's like, no, you're not. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw, I, I, I saw that. And then the guy's like, wait, no. Are there gonna be cops? Please, no. I don't want to get arrested. He's like, please, I please. Can't afford can to I do go this after this? Right and he's now. like, <laughs> I really can't afford this. Yeah, right. He's like, he's like the. Wait, what did he say? He's like, um, he's, he's like, am, am I going to get arrested? He's like, that's not up to me. <laughs> so if I go that way, I'm going to get arrested. Please, I can't do this. I won't. I won't. No, but <laughs> nothing is funnier when he like, he's like, so why did you send this message or this picture? And he like shows it right in front. <laughs> he's like, so why did you send a picture of yourself? masturbating to a 14 year old girl can you explain that <laughs> and then the guy's like uh, uh. dude a lot of them is like <laughs> the explanations that they do give it's like dude they will just sit there and just go circles for hours it's so fucking funny no but i actually there was this one i saw where this guy actually like did own up to it i think I and like he was like he, he was just he was completely honest about his feelings he was like yeah, I'm just, I've always had, like, dreams of, like, doing that. <laughs> and, he's, and he's like, I, I know it's not okay, but, like, you know, it's just, that's just, you know, what <laughs> like, he was completely on. I mean, obviously, he's still a creep and, like, a disgusting human being, yeah. but it was, an, it was a nice change of pace for that. I was like, oh, yeah, because, like you said, most of the people are just going around in circles, like, I don't know, I was just trying to, you know, see if everything was okay here. And yeah. <laughs> I have a very, and I, I don't know why, like, this topic just, first, I don't know why it interests me. I think it's, like, when you take the lowest of the low or the most like deplorable thing you can feel like the the darkest intrusive thoughts that you have that you take to life as opposed to just finding out like a healthier way to deal with them if you do feel them but i think part of my because like obviously like once you commit that act it's too late like you can have all the rehabilitation you want but it you know the damage is done but i remember i was watching a um a video about a guy 
And I mean, granted, I don't know the truth, like what, you know, I just only saw the one documentary that they did, or if it's like a little vice intro fucking video thing, but he was basically talking about how he has a sexual attraction to children, but he like has never done anything and never talked to anybody. And that's why he likes like basically is in his house all day and doesn't go out and doesn't like converse with people because he knows it's something that he has to change. But, uh, you know, supposedly he hasn't done anything yet. So it's like, you know, once you once you like actually like live out of fantasy, it's harder to be able to change. But like once you kind of kill that mindset earlier, it might be less likely for you to actually go out and offend and that's why the one thing that's kind of disappointing about To Catch a Predator, because it was really more for, like, TV and entertainment value. Like, you basically, you saw this guy, you saw how, you know, nervous and how retarded they were acting, and then at the end of it, you know, they just arrest him. And that's pretty much all that you learn from the story, right? Um, there's another channel on YouTube. There's, like, a bunch of, I don't know if you've ever seen the, there's a bunch of vigilante guys that like they basically do the same shit as a catcher predator like they'll pretend to be a underage kid and then they'll go out and catch pedophiles and shit but a lot of them are really stupid because they'll just go and berate or just intimidate or threaten you know law enforcement on them or blah 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 and again it's the same kind of thing it's like you just see them get ridiculed and then that's it but there's a guy on um he's I, in my opinion he's like the best at it um, his name is channel name is pop squad and he catches a lot like he has a website because YouTube keeps taking them down for some or he has some problem with YouTube but it, he catches like over 200 people and what he does is like instead of like going there and like being all threatening he just always wants to have a conversation so it's like there's been a couple times where people will tell him like you know like why do you keep doing this or like I see that you're reoffending or all that shit and he basically just forwards the information to the police so if it goes to court and then they do get you know trialed or uh, tried then they will get convicted kind of thing or if not if not but he's not out there like purposely baiting people to get arrested he just films the conversation and he provides people with like a therapy link kind of thing so then he will do like a follow-up so like i think i've seen a couple hundred of them there's only like one guy or two guys that like actually go like get help and then they do like a follow-up video kind of thing so I feel like stuff like that is more important to like understand, like you know, obviously you got to understand the root of the problem to fix it. So it's like trying to catch these people before they actually do something to somebody. And, and you know, granted, if they've never done it before, if they're actually, because everybody says it's their first time, but you know, obviously most of them are lying. Um, but it's interesting the way that they do it is that he doesn't, he just does it from a way of like journalism. He doesn't do it to just like be a vigilante and ridicule. Which I don't have a problem with either. I could give a fuck, but I just think it it brings more right. to the table. It's, yeah, that is interesting. Um, yeah, but yeah, I I don't know. I am always of the opinion like if you haven't caused too much damage already, you should you know, there should be a way to get rehabilitated. You know, before somebody rapes yeah. or murders. True. Which at that point, yeah, like you said, it's, it's kind of too late. Too far. <laughs> yeah. Do you think even like sending the pictures like that is too late? It so yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like if it's I mean, cuz you could argue like, you know, if if a guy has truly never done it before and then he sends pics to who he's thinking is someone that's underage, but it ends up being a decoy. I mean, you could say like, well, you know, his intention was to do it to a regular person, he just got caught. Like you could make that argument. Um, but I think it's still not as not as intense as actually physically like meeting somebody in person to do something sexual because you're taking away the person ability. Like you're sending a rain. Like it's easy to send a dick pic. You could send that to your fucking mom if you really want to, you know what I mean? But it's, it's harder for you to like whip your dick out in front of your family. If you get what I'm saying, it, it's a weird analogy, but like it, I feel like it's, it's, it's harder to justify doing something in person than it is to just not think and just be, you know, just let that dark thought win and just send a dick pic to someone that's underage. So I don't think it's too late there, but it may be. I, I don't know. I just feel like there should at least be a chance before too, too much damage has been done. Well, yeah, I actually disagree. I think it is too much because I think like the screen, I mean, you know, um, it's like, uh, like a lot of people think it's like, oh, well, it's like a, it's like a barrier and stuff like that. And it's like, well, if, I mean, if you're showing, if you're seeing the same exact thing in real life, like, would that be okay? Absolutely not. Yeah, no. Um, and I, and I, and I see what you're saying of like, 
yes, it is harder to do that. It is like it's it's it is easier to send those kind of things from your phone. It's easier to send anything from your phone. Yeah. It's easier to do anything on your phone rather than the you know rather than doing a person. But also like with with the with the phone, it's not just going to be that one person who sees it. Like she could send it to other people, and then you know potentially everyone could see. It. Yeah, let me clarify. I don't think in degrees of like. I think they're both bad, but I think just the mindset that it's easier to just do that as opposed to like using rational judgment to not do it. That's easier than actually, you know, going in person and then physically doing it. So that's why I think it might be like, I don't think it's too late to rehabilitate somebody that sends a dick pic more than it is to rehabilitate somebody that's already like raped a minor. I think it's easier to rehabilitate the guy that sent the dick pic is what I mean, really. And also to... Extra, extra okay. clarify, I don't okay. send fucking dick pics. I, I think, like, <laughs> I, I th- I'm serious. Like, I think, like, I've showed my dick on, like, a Skype call or some shit with the girl I was dating, but I've never, like, sent <laughs> people a pic. <laughs> Are you serious? I think so. I don't want to say I've never done it, but I've never, I know for a fact I've never taken a picture and sent it to anybody, and that's, like, unsolicited or somebody I've, I was dating. I've, I've never done it. Because I just, I just, I've always thought I was weird. I'd rather just do shit in person. Like, I, I don't know. I've always been like that, but... Either way, like, a real like I said, just purely person. for rehabilitation, I think it's easier to rehabilitate that guy before he goes out and actually does it. Right. I see. Okay. <laughs> um, wait, so I, I don't want to get too sidetracked, so I want to go back to City of God. Mm-hmm. Um, also, yeah, I pretty much liked every single character. Every character had their own kind of thing. They all had their own little personality. And, like, they all felt like real people. Like, that's the biggest thing when I'm judging, like, do I like characters or not? Um, a, a big thing about well-written characters are just, like, do these people just come off as, like, real people? Like, do they, can you relate to them? Can you, like, understand their their shtick without someone having to explain it to you, you know? Right, yeah. Like, you don't have to have that, like, cliche scene where this person goes, oh, he's, he's, he's a good person. He just, you know... He, 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 this happened to him and he has this and it's like crowd. right he's just he yeah he's, he's just he was led astray it's like i, I want to just see that and that's what was what's really nice about this movie is because like any every character almost like you just get their shtick like like uh what was his name chiagu was the was the ginger dude who dated angelica like i get his thing he's just a fucking coomer he just lives for for pleasure and just wants to just just do drugs and shit and he's just he's just really scrawny like you know <laughs> that's just who he is and i i get his deal and like everything he did made sense because i just I, I don't know i just got his character subconsciously and same thing with buscape and little z yeah you know. and benny like benny was just the cool dude everybody loved <laughs> yeah that one was interesting because like i used I've, I've known a couple people from school that were like him um, actually, some a lot of like, there's one dude that was like uncanny, looks like him. It's crazy. Like Benny, mm-hmm. I know a couple oh, people okay. that I was friends with in school that like they just had just in you know a intoxicating charisma, but they weren't a douche. Right? Yeah, he just seemed like a nice dude, and I love the moment we're talking about like the funny moments again, like at his go away party he's like he even um hooked up the church crowd like he even got in with them and he's like i promise one day i'll go to church and he's like shaking their <laughs> yeah i like that dude. that was a good one that was or great. they catch the fucking priest with the prostitutes in the one brothel or hotel or wherever the fuck they were trying to rob in the beginning it was a priest yeah remember in the beginning of the movie no, I didn't think... I mean, he just had a cross. I didn't think he was a priest. Did, Unless he was, like, wearing something. I uh, thought he was wearing, like, a... He's, he's wearing... He said my child or some shit. Like, he, it, it implied that he was some sort of religious figure. I mean, I just, like... Because, like, he just asked, like, um... I remember... What's his name? I think it was Goose or whoever. He was just like, oh, are, 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 you, are you from the church? And he's like, yes. And then he didn't kill him because of it. <laughs> okay, so... I thought that was, to me, that implied that he was, like, actual clergyman or something. I just thought it meant like you are were you like a church goer or oh. something like that. Well, either either way, I just thought it was a funny fucking tidbit in there. <laughs> that was, and then I, and then there's the dude who's having like the threesome, and then he's just like <laughs> walking in there, and he's like, "Give me your money!" And they're like, <laughs> "Um, 
I did really like that little part in the beginning with the tender trio. That was very well done. And actually, so yeah, for those, for those who don't know, the tender trio was like how the city of God actually started. And it was just these three dudes who were like the oldest people in like the, the friend group. And they started like robbing banks and robbing like motels and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and like that's just how it kind of all started and all of like the like this is just how we have to live and survive. And so then they, they have this operation where they go to this motel and steal a bunch of money. And then you realize later in the like later when they're told that all the people in the motel were killed and they didn't kill anybody. And then you realize that Lil Z did it. It was like, what? <laughs> I thought that was a nice twist. I kind of figured, like, I that's what I guess because just, like, looking right? at his character and just, like, he really wanted to be a part of it, I, I figured he was the one that did it. Right, because he always, like, he was always overcompensating for something, yeah. you know? Like you said, like, his insecurity for whatever. I mean, he was ugly. I mean, I didn't think he was that ugly, but... <laughs> I think someone even said it in the movie. That he's ugly. Yeah. Oh yeah, the the narrator was like, "Lil Z is ugly, and so is Georgie." Well, the way they said was it, he like was handsome. like, <laughs> realized he had all this money, but he couldn't come for one thing. He was ugly, <laughs> or some shit like that. I think, yeah, something like the that. Way they I think set it, it was, was, was funny. so funny. Yeah, and then he actually like tries to like make an effort to dance, and like I still felt for his character when like he asked to dance and then she's like oh no i have somebody like i actually did feel like even though he's like a total like just like ass like i still actually felt for him when you know he realized man like it's your inner end cell kicking in <laughs> yep <laughs> indeed oh shit what were your other gripes with it if there are any i mean not much it's i mean other than that i think it's i think it's great such a good movie like it's i mean it's like it's entertaining makes you think about things and like things that like it makes you actually like look at your own life and realize like how much you have oh yeah for sure it um great um it has a great soundtrack i think the songs in this mo- in the movie are great um which actually the original song for the opening and for the credits Seo Georgie did himself i think it's excellent um and also I'm actually trying to think if I do have any other gripes with it. Um, what, remember that plot line where remember he he takes the pictures and then the, the lady publishes them without him knowing, and then he like goes to her house and that happens. Like, did you think that that was like necessary? I don't know. I mean. I think it just kind of played on the entertainment factor. Like it wasn't necessary, but I mean, it's it's, it's kind of funny. Well, I mean, it, it is realistic. Like it it, it it's what could probably True. fucking happen if that situation was real. Like you fucking don't have a place to stay. Some fucking ladies letting you stay in your house, and then like y'all get drunk and fuck. Like I don't know. That just seems like something that would happen. So it didn't seem like it was unnecessary, but it wasn't necessary to the plot. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess that was kind of, yeah. but it was kind of well, funny. They didn't so, harp on yeah, it. I hate when like, I mean, especially when you're watching a movie with your parents, which is, it was, it was laughing my, I was laughing my ass off and I was just like imagining your whole family watching that movie. It was, it was making me die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and I, and I told you like my mom walked down in like the shot where it shows all of like the dead people in the motel. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah, like, it's really? the why? Like, why do I always have to, or like, I don't know if you've ever seen Roma. I think I talked about that. There's like one scene with like a naked dude. And then she, of course she walks in on that scene. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Right. And I must specify my, my, my parents don't mind what I watch. They just don't want it to be on in the same room as them. You know, as they're like cooking food or whatever. Like they don't want it. Yeah. They just don't want it on when they're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My going back to <laughs> what I, <laughs> why I brought it up. I hate when like, I don't know, like, like there's times where I want to like when you're watching porn, fine. Like that's what you go there for. But like every time I see a movie and there's just like a weird fucking like the, 
the fucking scene of them like kissing on each other is just like i don't know why like i don't know if it's because like it's just uncomfortable because i like watch that and every time that scene happened like when i'm watching it with my parents i just want to like god fucking kill me but because then like right and like i, I don't know like, obviously my, like, my i don't parents were fucking like weird like anytime like that shit would happen they would like want to like talk to me about it she like they'd be like so what do you think about that i'm like i'm not having this conversation with you right now we're not really? talking this is not how you introduce safe sex to me we're not doing we're not doing this i want to watch a fucking movie well you're like me obviously like it's not like a weird way at all like obviously like i'm much more comfortable watching those scenes by myself yeah. where i don't have to have someone like look at me and you know just look awkward at me like you know because it's like what do you do like do you look at the screen do you look at the other person if you look at the screen, there's a chance that the other person's going to look at you and you're going to be like, oh, no, they're thinking I'm into it. And then it's like, <laughs> if I look at them, they're going to think that I'm suspicious of them and they're going to think that, like, I'm judging them. And it's yeah, like, what do you it's do? It's stupid. So, like, every time I see that in a movie, it's just like, this is not needed. Like, if I want to watch this, yeah. I'll just well, watch like, porn. It, like, <clears throat> right. Or, like, if it's too long, yeah. <sighs> which is what I actually I, I really liked about the the scene with the when she takes it home. It's like it just lasted like, you know. They actually, like, talked, and then it happens, like, you know, it's, like, a two-second shot, and then fades into the next, like, thing. I was like, yeah, that 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 was nice. Like, they just, that was enough. <laughs> and same thing, like, with, with the banana scene. I'm like, yeah, like, one split-second shot, and then the dude's, uh, <laughs> no, and, and, and then, like, the, the, the lady's husband comes in with his, like, <laughs> it was, like, uh, it was, like, a shovel and just, like, beats her. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that that's all I need. It reminds me, like, <laughs> and this has happened, like, in the more recent years because they're just putting a lot more of it in, like, film and movies. Is like, anytime there's, like, a lesbian scene or, like, a gay scene, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, watching with my dad. He's like, oh, come on. Is this really necessary? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fucking funny. Oh. Yeah. But I just, it just, it's, it's funny to me because like, it's like, it's a level of uncomfort that's like exemplified more than usual. <laughs> right. Oh. Um, actually, I guess it, it, would nece- it wasn't necessarily, remember I was talking about my gripes with like how the, the movie was like right after like they made the deal to take down Lil Z and they were just robbing banks and everything. I guess it wasn't actually that itself. I think it was more just like the pacing like, I don't know, like, the pa- the pacing towards the end of the movie, I don't know, I just, it felt like it was just dying down, like, it was just petering out a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because in, like, the first half, I'm just like, I am digging the vibes of this movie, this is great, you know? Like, it's it's not fast-paced, but it's kind of like, you know, just like, like, it's, it's, it's coming, you know? But then it's like, I don't know, it gets to a point where I was like, eh, I think... I don't, I didn't really get too too much of that feeling i think it's because like it wasn't a super long movie so like i didn't feel like it was drawn out anywhere because i like it wasn't a fucking two and a half or three hour movie like it was it was what like hour and 50 or a little bit less than two or something like that i think it was just like two yes yeah, so, like two it, it was a re- like it was i think it was a good length i didn't to me like it didn't seem drawn out um more than you to I, I think that's my problem with a lot of movies they're like either way too short and don't conclude anything or they do it too quickly or it's like you just sit there and just listen to these fucking unbearable scenes for like 20 minutes it's like jesus christ (laughs) i kind of got that with the new batman like it was way too long but like of course it was there was never really uh, three hour trailers (laughs) right but i was like there was never really a moment where i was like you could have cut that out it just felt too long i don't know like but there was, but it was weird because, like I said, there was nothing really in particular that I said, yeah, cut that out. I don't know. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's just. Yeah, I mean, did you? Right? Did you have any gripes with the movie? No, not really. I I thought it was great. Um, I'm not really too nitpicky about like smaller stuff in movies. I feel like if I like the characters and I like the story, and I like a lot of the scenes, like I don't have to love every single scene of a movie. So. I'm not really right, as, like, I'm you, as critical as movies as I am music. So, like, with the movie, it's, like, if you're entertained, the movie's selling you, yeah, like... pretty much. Like, yeah, like, you're, like, I'm I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm rolling with yeah. it. Because there's a lot of movies where mm-hmm. I like its artistic value, but I don't really like the movie, like, for the acting or the story. I just like the visual or just the... the act, like. W- I don't like I used to get really disappointed in movies where like I loved the premise of it, but the actual execution was bad. 
but I don't know. These days I can enjoy it, even right, if it's a bad right. movie. But I hate like drawn out movies, or I hate like self righteous movies. I just oh, I can't take it. Huh. Um, an example of a movie that I love the concept, but I didn't think it was done very well, and I didn't like the movie was Speed. Have you ever heard of that? I have. I haven't seen it though. Yeah, like the concept's really cool. How like, and it sounds really engaging, and like suspenseful. Like the idea that a bus is hijacked and it has to stay at like X speed or else like a bomb will blow up. Right. Like, I think that's awesome. But like the movie, I was just like, this is boring. <laughs> and like, I, I didn't like the, the characters and stuff. And like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. That's the one thing I felt about the, the new Jordan Peele movie. Nope. That I thought that movie was boring as fuck. And I was really disappointed because I loved his first other two movies. And I posted something on Facebook about it and people got so fucking like irritated. Like you just don't understand black euphemisms and all that shit. It's like, I liked the first two movies. I just, this one was fucking drawn out. I just, it was boring. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You're like, I like these other movies that have these it's, black It's the same shit in every movie. Black. Like I get it. It's a fucking, it's a social commentary. Like I, I'm not a fucking third grader. I, I understand it. Congratulations. Claps all around. It was just fucking boring. Yeah, like you get a fucking medal, dude. Yeah, like which is like I was I was looking for it. I, dude, ever since fucking Key and Peele in middle school, I loved hell this fucking work. And then I love the first two movies. So like I I saw it on opening night. I was fucking excited, and then I was just like, God damn it, this sucked ass. And what even sucked even more is like my girlfriend's not really into movies, and so like we don't really go. Like I've probably seen two movies or three movies with her since I've dated her. But, like, so I took her to this one and be like, oh, this is going to be great. His other two movies are good because she likes his other two. And then, like, halfway through it, it wasn't building up to anything that was going to be entertaining. So I was like, god damn it. I'm sitting over looking at her and she's just staring at the screen blankly. And I'm like, oh, this is fucking, this is great. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, that is very different to when you and I saw The Northman. And we both looked at each other and we were like, yeah, yeah this, this is, is movie. this is awesome. Yeah, I would love to do a... A, like a review slash commentary of that. That's a good movie. Yeah, that was a great. Movie. I, oh, what I want to show you at some point is um the guy's third movie who did that. He made The Witch, and then he made The Northman, and then he made this really good movie in between them called The Lighthouse. Have you ever heard of that? I have, but I don't think I've seen it either. Do you know like what it's about? It's so no. so good, and like the I. So basically, it's like. It doesn't explain why, and you don't really need to know why, because it makes it more mysterious. It's like Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe are exiled to this small, tiny island in like 1600s New England, and they have to take care of a lighthouse. And they slowly go insane, like the more the movie goes along. Mm. It's really creepy, and it's also like... Actually, I'll, I'll, I, I would, I don't want to spoil anything, and I, I don't want to give any more expectations, so I'll just leave it at that. Great setup, bro. But yeah, we'll we can watch it and do a review on it. Um, yeah. Um, I watched uh, recently. Um, did you see uh, trailers for Barbarian? Um, is that that like that show that's in Latin or something? No, like it's a movie that it's a horror movie that just came out. It has a uh, Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell. It's about like a double booked Airbnb and like there's some like like creepy horror shit going on in the house. Oh, no, I didn't I didn't see that. That was a really good movie. I the reason why I wanted to see it was the the direct um I don't these might these guys are probably a little bit before your time. Do you know the the whitest kids you know? Have you heard of them? Is that like a like a comedy yeah, group? Yeah, they're a, they're something? a sketch comedy group. Mm, the whitest kids you know? Yeah. The name kind of sounds familiar, but no, I wouldn't be able to. They did like the the words. Abraham Lincoln skit, like how he actually died. <laughs> like it was like just him being a fucking like ghetto asshole because somebody was talking like during the play of Hamlet, and that's just how John Wilkes Booth runs up and kills him with a hammer. Like, <laughs> like they were really? one of my favorite sketch groups of all time. And last year, one of the members died, and I was like, "Fuck, that really kills it and crushes it." But then another one of the members was the guy that directed this movie, and this is like his first like big production movie so like i was hoping that it was going to be good and it was and it's getting like great reviews in the box office so it's like it probably opens him up to 
do other like movies and just really launch his career because he's kind of just been like in a couple you know b-list sitcoms after that he hasn't really gained too much mm-hmm. problems so like it made me genuinely happy to like see somebody actually like get the start of their fang in their fandom right you're like that's somebody i support and like I w- i'm glad that they're like doing well. yeah so i was genuinely that, happy that it was nice, a great too. movie um right also the fact he's from virginia yeah. too oh i didn't realize that uh no but dude what i what i rewatched um over the weekend and what I really want to show you, after having shown you City of God, I want to show you Amores Perros, the Mexican movie I was telling you about with the car crash. Oh, yeah. That movie is 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 great. Um, I think that I think that's gonna be the next one, because I want to take a little break from the music and I want to do some, some movies. Yeah, I'm done with that. Fucking watch them all. Yeah, Damn. we got We gotta watch them all. We gotta watch. And like, um, I know I like to stick to just things that I like, but I'll, I'll be willing to like do genres that I don't typically do. Like I don't typically do horror or, or comedy. It's typically just drama. It's either drama or like historical, like, like period piece movies or like, um, some like you know ethnic things like some Japanese movies that are really cool. Like there's yeah. some samurai movies I really like, and obviously like you know like I was telling you on the other podcast how I'm, I'm sold on like concept movies where it's like there's a car crash in Mexico City, as opposed to like we're making a movie about the other comic book character that is in this. I'm like I don't care. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean for horror movies it's tough because there's just something about them that they're innately not going to be a good movie. I don't know what it is, but it, it, you can chalk it down to acting or writing or just the effects or just if it's actually scary or if it's just dumb. But I mean, it, I think it's very difficult to make a horror movie, a good story more or less. I think they're just focused on trying to make it as scary as possible rather than it being something that's actually like worth watching again. You know what I mean? So there's a right. there's horror movies that I like, but not ones that like are good for reviewing because it's just like they they obviously all have plot holes that are obvious. I don't mean to say that word twice, sure. but I mean it really sticks at you obviously. But I I don't know. I I do. I'm a fan of them. I like the cheese. I like the all the shits. I think like watching actually what will be more entertaining is watching like really shitty horror movies or like the just like almost the parody ones like bird demic or attack of the killer tomatoes or sharknado or shit like that like those ones are great bird demic i've never seen but i heard <laughs> oh, it fuck, is you're in for his, a treat. hysterical <laughs> yeah you're in for a fucking um, treat it's the lowest budget movie I've, you can think of right um honestly i think um one of the only horror movies i know that genuinely does have a good story is alien honestly cuz i love actually the um the allegory of like the the alien with like rape and stuff like that and also how like there's a bunch of connections you can draw with the xenomorph of how like it's essentially like just this dark twisted inverse of humanity and like it represents the worst in humans you know yeah. like it's it, it's like there's something about the design of the xenomorph like it's beautiful you know but it's also terrifying and you and you could tell by like the way it moves and everything that it's like proud of itself. Like it knows it's cool. It knows it's like sexy. <laughs> Sorry, not in that way, but you you know what I mean. Like yeah. it, there's like, well, I mean, but at the same time, yes, because like there is a bunch of like sexual undertones in Alien. Like, um, especially like just the design of the Xenomorph. Like if you look at it, you know. <laughs> Um, and I also love how it doesn't have eyes. I think that that just makes it creepier. Yeah. Um, but also if you, like I've, I've talked about before, if you look at H.R. Giger's concept art for the movie, it's really, really pseudosexual. I'm sure it has to be a level of that to really come to life. That's the final piece missing. Right. But yeah, we can, like I said, if you like that series, like the, the newest Predator will be a good one. I actually really like that one, the one that came out on Hulu. I, I think I was talking to you about yeah. it last time. Like, that'd be a great one to do. You you did. I, I'd be willing to see that because I really do like the first Predator. Yeah. Um, this one's actually very well done. Um, 
I think one another one of my favorites that I liked that had a lot of really dumb remakes was and this one it, it was one of those things where like I love the story and some of the execution is kind of cheesy but I remember I watched it when I was a little bit younger so it was like especially it was a uh, children of the corn I love that the premise of that story um I don't think I've ever seen that do you know what it's about no I don't think so like I'm the name it's like it's not familiar to so me. children of the corn it's a Stephen King um story but basically the premise is that this small town in Nebraska, I think it is. Yeah, it's in Nebraska. And basically it's like this this kid, he's like a demonic, not like, he basically, he gets like tempted from some demonic presence to like preach to other kids that once you hit like 35, like you need to die because being an adult's bad. So it's like a bunch of kids that go around and like kill all their parents so they can rule this town. Um, and it's really creepy, like the, the actor that they got for him, like he really played, he's like a, he starts like his own cult. So like, it's like basically like a cult of kids that like get convinced to kill their family. And this couple from out of town gets lost in Nebraska and like their car gets broken down. So like they're trying to find out what happened to everybody in this town. And it's just them trying to not be killed by these kids. Like it's pretty fucking creepy. Actually, that is a cool concept. Yeah, but it was done in, like, the 80s or 90s, so, like, the actual execution of things is kind of cheesy, but it's still main... Like, I, I just like the story a lot. Right. Well, in terms of, like, Stephen King, there's actually a bunch of stuff that I would really like to see. Like, I really want to see The Mist. Have you ever heard of that one? I think so. There's a lot of, mo- like, books and, that I've read a long time ago and ones that I've half read, so there's... It, it's all jumbled in my head. Right. Um, the mist is like the one with like the tentacle thingies. I think I don't really know. I'd rather just go in like more blind than I already am. Yeah. Um, and then I also want to see Misery with Kathy Bates. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that one does. But yeah, you know which one I'm talking yeah. about. That one looks really because Kathy Bates is just creepy. You know, like she just has that. <laughs> um, also, what else? Of ones I have seen, Shawshank Redemption is obviously great. I still have never seen it. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. It's a movie that it's funny. It, I almost like don't want to watch it just because like I, I can tell you like you know more than ten times there's been people around me talking about that movie and asking me if I've seen it and I've said no every time and they're just like what and I kind of want to keep that going. I like that feeling of like not seeing a movie that everybody's seen. It's kind of fun. I have some of those. I still have that with Joker. I've never seen Joker. That one, I liked it. It it was one of those things like it did not need to be as long as it was, but I liked the story of it. And um, obviously, I mean, it was a very politicized movie, so it's like the it's the the king of For the no movie. reason. Yeah, it, like it doesn't need to be politicized, and everyone is just like, oh, the left thinks it's this, and then the right thinks it's yeah. this, and it's like, how about you just talk about the actual movie? And if it's a good movie or not. I, one of my favorite memes from it was like news stations when they are visibly confused why there's no mass shooting yet because of this movie. <laughs> right. That was like their intention. I'm like, guys, you are literally like doing what you claim that this movie, like what you condemn about this movie. Because your point is that movies like this and Taxi Driver like incite violence. And it's like, yeah, okay, but then you guys are also inciting violence. It's, it's the oldest straw man known to man, violent video games, violent movies, violent music, blah, 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 blah. Like all that shit's been, we've already talked about it forever. It's people like the news that actually fucking propagate this notion of fear that you need to feel like your life is in danger for X amount of reasons. Anyway, but I, I mean, I did like it. I think Joaquin Phoenix's performance was really good. Um, I mean, the whole point of the movie is a guy that's fucking, he has a disorder that gets bullied. Then he goes insane and becomes the Joker. Like that's really all the political thing you can take out of it. So it's like, Oh, be nice to people. Don't be careful who you bully. That might be a shooter. It's like the whole Columbine thing over and over again. But it's like if they're psychopathic or not, or if they just been bullied, whatever. But anyway, I don't know. Like I said, I th- I think it was just a little bit too long for what it was. But again, it was it was a depressing movie though. That that's the one thing about it has that like DC universe depression. <laughs> yeah, that was the new Batman. Yeah. Like it was just so dour and like there's Edge Lord and stuff like with the with the Riddler. Yeah. I'm just like okay. He was also the king in so. <laughs> yes, no, the Riddler. No, but I didn't like that because I was like. 
that's not the Riddler. And like, I'm not really the one to say like, that's not like the comic, but in that situation, I'm like, I wanted the Riddler to be like yeah, the, Riddle me this, Batman. The Riddler is such a fucking lame character though. He's a goofy fucking, like, n- like there's no uh, way that, they that could make true. him in a modern okay. context of a movie. Like he's so stupid. I'll give you that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I didn't mind that. Okay. I, I think I was talking about this the last time. The, 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 the most impactful thing about, um, that universe, like I said, was like, the Riddler, like shit, like that. Like that's probably the closest thing in Batman that could happen in real life. Or like the Joker, even. I mean, well, no, because remember, I, last podcast I was talking, like the Joker had a fucking like army of people that carried out all this complex shit that he probably would never have gotten away with in real life. But the Riddler, yeah, that, that, he that, had a couple people that were just gonna shoot up a fucking stadium. He planted bombs around a city. Like that could be that could be real life. Definitely, but I was saying more like the Joker is also real in the sense just like the actual character himself, especially like in the Dark Knight, that version of Joker, like you just feel like you could just like turn a corner and he's like right there. (laughs) I mean, obviously it is stylized and stuff like that, but which is something I still respect about um, those Batman movies as opposed to the new one. I just, I like the style of those movies better and how like, even though... You, you like you know how the Dark Knight and like Batman Begins, those are going for a more realistic tone, but they still stylize it to a degree, yeah. so that to a point where you're like, yes, I'm still watching a superhero movie, which I liked about it because, um, actually like my favorite part of the Batman, the new one, was like that car chase with the Penguin. That was so awesome. Yeah, that was good. I, I any time of I think. Right. No. Overall, I thought it was, it was good. Um, I did, obviously just had some complaints, like I was saying, and how I like the other Batman better. But anytime a movie makes me go, how did they do that? I'm like, I have to give you points for yeah. that. <laughs> um, and I loved how it was like pretty realistic. Like it looked like it could be something in real life until like, you know, the car, the, the, the truck is like, you know, collapsing. And then it just magically makes a ramp for Batman to like drive over. I was yeah. like, okay. I'm not talking about I, like I liked the, that. the exaggerated action no, I, scenes. I'm talking about like the like the riddler like being like a real that. life villain yeah. like that something like that could actually happen like that's that's realistic to me no but i was saying i i liked that i thought that, that i was like ah oh, they were giving me a little wink yeah because they were like no nope, you're still watching a superhero movie <laughs> yeah i liked that um yeah but overall i just like the other batman's better but that's just my opinion and no one cares but <laughs> it's irrelevant um oh <laughs> Um, that actually makes me think another thing that I really wanted to show you and bear with me. Cause when I tell you, you're going to be like, well, oh God. what? Oh God. So, um, it is the only part of star Wars that I still really love. Um, because for like most of star Wars, like I like episode four and five and six, but then outside of that, it's not that great. I like the prequels cause of the memes and like I had the best time ever watching it with my brother and sister. Episode two. That was so funny. We just shit all over it. It was great. Yeah. But um I think the only really thing that I still think in Star Wars that is truly great and just so beautifully artistic is the two thousand three Clone Wars animated show. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Right. It's like hand drawn. It's so well done. And like, it's just such a good work of art. And I don't, and I'm just fascinated by how good it is. I'm like, this, this shouldn't be this good. And I just like, I just wanted to see like what you thought about it. I never watched it. Right. So I guess I think that'd be cool to watch it. And like, it, it's only like the whole show is literally two hours long. Like it's the length of a movie. Wait, wasn't, I'm trying to, cause like, don't they, didn't they have like a Clone Wars one that was also animated that ran for a lot longer? Yeah, but that was, like, computer animated. Oh, uh, so they had, like, a legitimate, like, hand-drawn one? Yeah, they did. Oh. That was, like, it was, it was on Cartoon Network. It was done by the same director as Samurai Jack. So it's in that similar kind of drawing style. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds cool. I did like Samurai Jack. So where, right, yeah, because, like, Samurai Jack, it's, like, it has that art style where it's, like, it's very simplistic. Um, It's very, you know... um it's like striking. There's lots of just like, you know, the storyboards, like it's just a bunch of striking imagery because you're limited of like what you can depict. So you have to make every movement like look, you know, like it has to grab your attention. 
and that's what the show really does. I think it, it like demands your attention with like the way that the sounds are just like put and like just the atmosphere. Cause like I said, I've talked about this a billion times. I'm a guy who just, I really love mood and atmosphere and just, I'm like, what creates an enticing mood? What creates an like oozing atmosphere and stuff like that? And I think the show for, I'm like, this just, the show does not deserve to be this good. The show is literally made because they needed to sell toys but it's good. It's it's fantastic nonetheless. I'm just fascinated that it's this good and this artistic. I think because um, like for shows yeah. they hire people. I, I feel like I, this is not my world, so this is total fucking postulating. But I just feel like the selection process for movies is way different for shows. Like they'll get guys that because like it's 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 easier. I I'm guessing it's easier to pitch a show than it is a movie. And the reason I say it is because like you can. I, I just feel like there's a lot, of, and again, it may be because just the pacing of a show is going to be superior to a movie. That's just how it's going to be if it's a good right. show. Um, but I just think, like, the guys that they get to, like, be a part of these shows, like, are, a lot of them are more unnamed or just they're, they, like, they're, I don't even know how to put it. Like, I feel like it's easier to get really good people to work on a show than to work on a movie. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, also, like a sh- I feel like it. I mean, also, shows, well, not at this point, but back in the day, like, shows were also, like, they were a lot cheaper to make because they had less production value. Yeah. Um, I mean, now it's it's completely different because now, like, they, they look exactly like movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's the way that it's, it's, it's space. So it's, like, you have to, for a movie, you have to do like this massive budget, then it has to do well in the box office for a couple of weeks, and then it's overtaken by another movie. Shows, like, especially like for the format where like you watch one show a week, like that can span out for a fucking year. Right, exactly. So I think that's more. I guess. Thing. Right, like it's easier to plan out shows in that regard. Yeah, so I, and I, I don't know what makes more money. I don't know, but I, I don't know. I just feel like I've yeah, always seen a either. lot better shows um, than movies. I'm telling you, if, if you keep along the path of my taste in movies, like City of God, you're going to find some great stuff. I'm sure I will. That's why I'm open to most things. Yeah. Like I told you, I want to show you Amor, Amores Perros, and I got to show you... Uh, there's a bunch of Spanish language movies I want to show you. Like I told you about Beautiful, where like Javier Bardem lives in Barcelona, and he like kind of has this... like unexplicable like and it's just this inexplicable ability to like communicate with the spiritual world and see things and like see dead spirits it's really hard to explain what it is but it's such a cool idea yeah and he has like prostate cancer and he like and he doesn't tell his family and it's kind of really it's really depressing <laughs> yeah. i don't know why i really want to show you that the depressing that, movies uh, always yeah, are sorry. sometimes the best it's really funny well i mean I- Things that make uh, that like my sister brought this up to me, um, and it it I was like yeah that's that's really true is that the reason comedies don't age well age as well as tragedies is because things that make us laugh is very dependent on like the time that you're in, you know, but like things that make us cry that's almost universal any time and place throughout humans history you know yeah i could see that i also think it's funny like i can watch blazing saddles and laugh my ass off you know that movie was made in like the fucking 70s or whatever um i have never actually seen that whole thing so you've never seen the whole thing no it's wild bro i love that fucking movie you definitely Um, everybody's like oh you couldn't make that movie today like no shit yeah south park probably would have done something similar and they can get away with it so someone could get away with i don't it. know bro they said the n-word a lot <laughs> really Although, so did Django. so i guess it literally is just fucking how you do it but yeah. when tarantino loves his n-word <laughs> yeah. he loves his n-word and words and feats yeah, yeah I, I i don't know what's going on with that but um wait what, what were you just saying Oh yeah, I mean, I I do agree with the premise that it's like comedy goes out of style more than suffering does. Right, but also like there is value in seeing what 
certain people's thought were funny at a specific place in time you know yeah. i mean if you go to the greek term like the comedies those are really tragic so sometimes they're hand in hand you know they always say like the they're always got to be a victim for a joke yeah right there's got always got to be the butt of the yeah. joke so and sometimes they're hand in hand but um yeah i mean I, I don't know it's it can you can be as convoluted as you want i just yeah i mean i I mean, I just think things with a more serious undertone are just, they're applicable to more things than something being silly or just something being stupid, obviously. I remember you said you don't like Goodfellas, and that got me going, but I didn't want to say anything because I wanted to stick to City of God, but you don't like Goodfellas, really? I don't like Italian mob movies. I just think they're all the fucking same. Like, I don't know, like Scarface, yeah, Goodfellas, that's like... fucking anything with Robert De Niro, I, just, I don't give a fuck. No, but, like, Goodfellas is, like, the one that actually is good. And it actually does have... Like, I love how much character and all, and all of, like, the, the style and, like, the way it's made and, like, the actual characters in Goodfellas. Like, I think all the characters in that movie are hilarious. Like, Joe Pesci is so gut-bustingly funny in that movie. And also, I love how it just... It just glorifies like being Italian. It's and it, like it knows very well that it's doing that. Wait, I may have said the wrong thing. Great. I've seen Goodfellas. I like that. Wait, what's that one show that was like the mob show? Oh, uh, this the Sopranos. Sopranos. I was thinking of Sopranos. I wasn't thinking of Goodfellas. That that I actually do like that movie. Sopranos is what I was talking about. Like I could give a fuck. Okay, I've never seen Sopranos. Yeah, it's but... it's basically like Seinfeld with murder. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. For, they're nothing alike, but it's just they're just from. It's like I just hate the Northeast. Right. Is what I'm getting at. I just I fucking hate the accent. I hate the people. Right. The shit is boring. It's all the fucking same. Everybody has the best pizza place. I just I don't care. Every everything is hey Tony. Yeah, I, don't give a fuck, man. I could care less. Right. Um, I thought you were gonna say that it's it's like Italian Breaking Bad or something like that. I, I might as well, yeah. And actually, that was my problem with Breaking Bad, too. Like, it's just, I don't know. Sometimes that, like, drug gang shit, it's just, it, I've seen too many of them. I could just, they have really have to do it interestingly. But, I mean, Breaking Bad's fine. I just, I don't know why I can't get into it. The same thing with The Walking Dead. I can't get into that either. I love the, it's gonna, it's making me want to go back and watch it Um, for the, like, the whole thing is, um, oh, I love all the memes for Breaking Bad. They're so great. Yeah, the memes are great, but I don't know. It's just, for some reason, I can't get into the show. It, I f watched like most of the first season, but then I stopped. I don't really remember why, but I remember I really was really liking it. I think it's just because for a show like that, like especially when you make it up as you go along, like it, you, it just gets stale after a while. I think. Okay, my dad told me he's only seen the last episode. Of what season? No, like he he's only seen the very last episode. Why? <laughs> It's because like um, when he was like living here, I think, and I and me and the rest of the family weren't. He 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 was living with his um, his coworker in his apartment, and he invited a bunch of friends over. And like my dad w would have just stayed up in his room, and he was like, and his friend was like, no no no, come down, let's just have a beer, watch Breaking Bad. And he's like, okay sure. And then he just watched it, and then he thought it was great. <laughs> so he had like no idea what was going on. Just vibing. Your dad seems like that kind of person, just can vibe to whatever. He right, you, you got that like space. Yeah, he's always like, "Yeah, just give me like a drink." I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, um, he says he 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 liked it when I told you that. Um, like when I told him that you liked the hot sauce. That was fucking good. I liquor themed hot sauce should be more of a more of a commonality. He said he can order y'all like a box if you want. Yeah, that'd be fucking sick. I like the um. I think my favorite was the the tequila flavored one. That one was really fucking good. I like the bourbon. That one's the bourbon one was good banging. too. That was great. I wonder if they have a rum one. What that would taste like? They they do have a rum one. Have you tried it? Yes, but I don't remember how it tasted. I need to go back. Yeah, super good. Um, um speaking of things, how was your trip to Puerto Rico? You you missed the hurricane by like a week. Yeah, I know. That was the luckiest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, I hate to do this to, like, the people listening to this, but I'd actually, like, a large bit of the Puerto Rico trip, I'd actually rather talk to you about it in person. Oh, shit. Was it that bad? Um, no. Really? I mean, I'll, 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 I'll explain. <laughs> Did you get somebody when, pregnant, like I whenever said? Whenever I'm at... No, 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 no. no. 
actually like when when i was telling matt about like um the puerto rico trip and then he was like was it great and i was like yes up until the last night so so to speak and he's like oh were you just mad that you didn't you know give me pussy and he's like and i'm like <laughs> no and he's like it's okay will what was his name <laughs> <laughs> But no, I did nothing of the sort. You can't talk about um, it though. No, 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 no. Um, no, there's just this one thing where I'd rather just like just explain it to you in person. I don't know. When I explain it to you, it'll it'll make more sense. I'm always um, excited for these off-camera stories. <laughs> right. Um. Other than that, I mean, it was pretty epic. Like, what did you do? The first, the first day, we just like. We just like swam around in the pool, just sat down and like, we just, you know, we we're just chilling. Like I was just there with my dad. And then like, we, there's a, there's a swim up bar where you just go swim and just order drink and stuff. Like we were just chilling. Um, we went to some great restaurants. Um, also I had, to, I got, I went with my dad and his party to a bunch of the meetings they were doing, which I actually went to the governor. I went to, I went to the governor's house. Oh, that's cool. I didn't get to meet the governor, <laughs> but, um, cause he was, I think he was busy and he couldn't be with the meeting, but he sent one of his assistants to be with us. And I was at the meeting. Like I was sitting at the table. I was literally sitting at the head of the table. I have nothing, I have nothing to do with what's going on. O- other than that, my dad's in on this and I'm just like, there, just nodding my head, <laughs> wearing my suit, just looking like everybody else. I'm just like, yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, and then I, I was explaining that to my boss, like, cause he asked me how the trip was when I got back and he's like, Oh, so you were like Hunter Biden essentially. I was like, yes, I was <laughs> <laughs> political jab. Right. No, but that was, <laughs> I was like, yes. In the sense that I have nothing to do with go- what's going on, except for the fact that my dad's in on this stuff and I get to benefit from this. You should have been like, yeah, the crack was good too. <laughs> right. Um, so like I, I mean, obviously, it's probably rough now because of the hurricane. But, like, when you went, like, was San Juan, like, what was that like? Cause the last time I was there years ago, like, it was pretty it was pretty rough. Not in, like, the sense well, of, like, was... there's just crime everywhere, but just the fact that, like, the actual city was just looking rough physically. I mean, there were certain parts of it. Like, when I was driving in the – when we were in the Uber, on the way back to the hotel, we drove from the – the old district, which was really cool looking with like the, all the old Spanish architecture. Oh, yeah, it got, gave cool. me a, right. It gave me a lot of new Orleans vibes, except it was like new Orleans, but like more Spanish. And so like, it was, um, I just loved walking in those streets and just like, hearing the salsa from the clubs, like just blaring. It was so great. It was, I loved it over there. And then I went to this really beautiful church and then there was like the tomb of Ponce de Leon. I was like, yeah this is this is nice there's so many moments where i'm just like yeah this is nice (laughs) his tombs in puerto rico Uh, yeah he was he he was like the governor of puerto rico damn i fucking missed that man i wish i would have saw that when i was there yeah he's like the hernan cortez of puerto rico i don't know why i was thinking how the fuck was i thinking i'm gonna have been thinking of cortez ponce leon was a guy that wanted to find the founding of youth right or like the city of yes. gold too, Aztec. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, I was thinking of Cortez. Um, right. Yeah. Um. We were walking towards it. Do you remember El Morro? It's like that huge, um, fortress and like slash castle that's like on the coast yeah. that was just used to defend. Yeah, we were walking on that huge, um, street to like. The huge pathway to like go to it, but then it started to rain and then we had to walk back. Oh, that sucks. So I never actually got to go in it, but I mean, it was really hot and humid, and there was gnats everywhere, and I was wearing like a suit, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll go home." <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Right, but then obviously, like on the way back from, like you were saying, the like the bed parts, like on the way back from the old district back to like the hotels near the airport. Um, yeah, there was just some places like looking by, I mean, like, like you said, not really crime, it just, just the infrastructure, like it's just not very nice, you know, like it's just kind of run down and stuff like that, you know, it just kind of made me feel like, yeah, you know? Yeah, I can imagine because I know like every time they have like a 
Cause they've been they get every time there's a hurricane they get fucked pretty heavily. I don't know if they've had earthquakes there, um, but I know like every hurricane always fucking rapes them and then always knocks out power. Like power is always an issue. To like sometimes the, the whole island will be struggling for power. Yeah, I remember you were telling me that. Brutal. Mo. I think there is earthquakes because I mean the island's made up. Like, it's like Hawaii, where it's like a volcano. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, m- the view from my hotel was just gorgeous. Like, I just saw this. It was so, like, foggy and misty in the distance. And then I would just see, like, these huge mountains. Oh, it was so cool looking. Did you take any pictures? Oh, I took tons of pictures. <sighs> I love That's one thing I'm starting to do now, because, like, I never gave a fuck about pictures. So, like, I'm starting, like, all the cool places that I go to now, I'm starting to actually take pictures and, like, have good memories of where I've been. But... I always like the tropical views and mountain views and all that shit. But did you, so like, you, where'd you fly out of? Um, we flew out of Dulles and then we landed in Miami. No, not Miami. I think it was, um, it was Charlotte. Yeah. And then from Charlotte to San Juan. Really? And then, but ba- yeah. Weird. I don't know why. It... <laughs> yeah. The flight to, the flight to Charlotte was like 45 minutes. That's why I was confused why you'd have a fucking layover in Charlotte and then from fucking Charlotte all the way down to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I don't know, man. They know the routes, apparently, so... I can't... There's a... They got their safe. There's a comedian so. that always jokes about, like, you could be fucking going anywhere in the world, but you'd have a layover in fucking Charlotte. I've never had it happen, but apparently it's a thing. <laughs> that's... Yeah, that's pretty funny. I, I get lucky. I, I usually always get direct flights. I very rarely have ever had a... I think once since I've been flying i've had a layover in another airport but mostly it's always been straight like i'll fly to los angeles straight minnesota straight florida straight um how long does it take to get to los angeles uh, i think it's like five hours or five and a half somewhere around there um the longest flight was going to spain but we it just it was direct it went from philly to fucking madrid how long did that take? Uh, maybe twelve hours. I don't know. I was sleeping for most of it. Ish, that's I sleeping on like a long ass flight is just not a good feeling. It depends on the plane though, because the I don't remember what airline we flew, but the it was a massive jet. Like it was the seats were big. Like we flew a coach, but the coach was nice. Like I I usually can't fall asleep sitting down. I I always usually have to be vertical. But these ones, like, I don't know, like, what it was. Like, I was able to do it on this one. Maybe they fed you something in the airline food. I don't know. Yeah, here's some, <laughs> here's some fucking Ambien. You don't even remember how shitty your flight was with us. Yeah, there's <laughs> lace. Well, in your brownie, we just put some melatonin in it. It's fine. Yeah, melatonin, Ambien, fucking whatever date rape jug they can get over in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is Spain. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember what airline that, but, but yeah, I, I'm very fortunate to never really have to deal too much with layovers. That's yeah, nice. Well, the layover wasn't that long, but it was still a layover. So, yeah. yeah. How long was the flight from Charlotte to Puerto Rico? Charlotte to Puerto Rico is maybe like three hours. Oh, really? It's not long at all. No, not at all. And also, like, I had plenty of music to listen to, and it was great to just, like, get into the vibes. Like, I was just listening to all my, like, Puerto Rican salsa and stuff like that. It was great. I even listened to a new Mark Anthony album, which I might recommend. <laughs> and you don't need your passport, right? Since it's a U.S. territory? No, you don't. Nice. You, I just needed, like, a an ID, so I just showed them my, my, my license, and they, they're like, yeah, you're good to go. Nice. And also what was really nice was like there was no COVID restrictions anymore. So like you just go up there and they're like, all right, where are you going? And like, yeah, there's that. And then you're just like on your way. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> yeah, the COVID shit is like non-apparent. I remember it was a little bit, well, not too, too strange. But when I went to Disney, there was like almost, there was very, very, very few people that were wearing masks. But nobody gave a fuck. Nobody asked you. Like there even there was no sign saying like please wear a mask or it's recommended to wear one or they weren't checking for vaccination reports and all that shit. Like it was, it was pretty much like it never existed. Like I was there for a week and forgot about fucking COVID. And then the yeah, <laughs> funny was, enough, the people that, that I nice. went with, they both got COVID. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That I'm lucky oh, I had to be man. asymptomatic to it. So I don't fucking, my girlfriend's gotten COVID like fucking twice and I've been just nothing. 
If you don't mind me asking, how long have you been dating, Jordan? I don't know, somewhere around two years, a little bit longer, maybe. I see. Feels like a fucking eternity. Yeah, I'm a- I don't know why, like... Right, I- huh? I'm at the same point in my life, because it's like, once you graduate high school, everything's like... That was like two years ago, I think. I yeah, I, I, I don't even know what fucking day that... Like, never since I've, like, and this has been since, like, dropping out of college, I've never fucking needed to know <laughs> what day of the week was. I just know when the weekend is and what day I need to go back to work. Like, I, I don't know fucking days... Unless it's something I'm actually looking forward to or something I have to know the day on. But, yeah, I don't fucking know. I don't write shit down. I typically, right. I typically know the day of the week. I t- I don't. I just won't know the date. Yeah. So, like, because, like, almost, like, every day there's, like, a specific thing on that day that I do that's different because it's that day. So, it's, like, I'll just know what it is based on what I'm doing. Um, But, like, the date, I'm, like, wait. Like I, I I never remember that. <laughs> yeah. So I I feel like I'm I'm more cognizant of the date than the day because I just I know when I have like I always have time like oh this month I'm doing this or I'm going to a show in a couple weeks on this date or like something's happening that so like I there's always dates in my mind but like the actual day of the week I can give a fuck now because I don't really have to because my but, schedule's consistent and my alarm goes off every day at the same time so. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> I and like you thought it was hilarious too. Like I, I remember when Matt was like, "Yeah, I love the weekends, you know, because I could just wake up and like I don't have to work, you know." And I'm like, "Matt, I think you could say that like every day." <laughs> well, I can come in whatever time he wants, and do nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Yeah. But cool. So I'm glad that I don't know. I was, I was expecting something weird to happen on your trip or just something funny, but I guess you can't fucking no, share it, it. It's it's funny, but. Oh. Why can't come on? It can't be that bad. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now you tell everybody oh, they're gonna oh. be like, what the fuck? Why'd you withhold this? <laughs> yeah. Um well actually Like I could say it, but like not right now. I'll um Why is why are you why are you painting this ominous picture? No, but it's cause like it's kinda hard to explain, dude. It's not, the more you talk, the more I want to know. I know that, but you could find out like when I'm whenever I go to the guitar store, and it'd be better because then like Adrian will be there. Steve will think it's like hilarious. There was something I was about to say, but I forgot. <laughs> I'm glad I censored myself because you had to bleep it out. But fine, I'll wait for it. <laughs> and, and like you'll be there with Steve and Adrian, and like. Y'all are all be new, like, first-time listeners. So. Is this a story that we're going to make fun of you for? All three of us at the same time? Yes, but it's not as bad as, like, oh, the other wait. stuff. It's not as bad as the other stuff. Oh, I so. really can't wait. <laughs> but it is it is a will moment, I'll tell oh, you that. Oh, sick. It doesn't, it doesn't involve girls at all. In that sense, no. It doesn't. Oh. You got fucking played by a Puerto Rican chick. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that's not it. I was just saying, like, yes, there is f- females in the story, but not like that. God, one of these days you're gonna have to just spill it on here because it's, it's just gonna be great content. Like, you just gotta think of the content. Oh, no, I, I, I will. I will explain the con. No, I, I will do this at some point. Just, I can't just. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Well. I look forward to it. Nonetheless, it was my favorite. I like the, I like the gang, the gang making fun of you. It's my favorite. It's my yeah. favorite genre. Matt and the gang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we need to do a podcast, and I know Matt's never gonna agree to. It. We need to have everyone from the store, and we need to do a, like a big podcast. I'm down. I'm down to do the drunk, the the drunk group one too. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be great. Like I want. To do with you, Matt, Steve, and Adrian. Hopefully Travis, but I know that's like a long shot. You don't have any like, wild friends could... to fucking display on here. No, I do, but like I just don't really think like, oh, they should like be, I should do it with you guys. Like, I don't know. I just don't put that two and two together. Because like, I just don't know how y'all would interact. You know what I'm saying? I can interact with anybody. I, I fucking talk to random motherfuckers all day. Yeah, true. Listen to all their bullshit. No, I mean, I care. I, yeah, I can too. 
but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, unfortunately, there's no bonus credits, so sorry, everybody. You won't see how much of an incel Will is. <laughs> I could, no, I could probably do it. I could probably do it next episode. <laughs> We'll do a we'll do a Which, dedicated um, segment, the spotlight. Yep, and be like, what went down in Puerto Rico? He murdered somebody and then got away with it. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, my fucking my trip was fun. I dude, have you ever been to Disney? Wait, okay, wait, hold on. I'll I'll put it this way with the with the story. Oh shit! All all I'm gonna tell you is. We went to a Mexican restaurant, and I had some margaritas. If only the cell phone quality wasn't shitty down there, then we'd have a great video, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? The cell phone quality is, like, the same. No, I'm fucking around. I know. Um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, the Disney, like, World Land? Which yeah, one? the one in Florida. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Dude, no one fucking tells me. I, I've had, like millions of people like everybody i knew fucking growing up went there fucking people that i've known close to me go there no one told me how fucking shitty the food was and it's so expensive Mm. the fucking resort that you stay in gives you like best western style breakfast but you have to pay 13 dollars for it every day for fucking like two waffles some eggs and fucking a sausage link or some fucking shit like that it was gross. The most, kinda, even like the like, yeah, like the people I went with, they booked like the reservations. So like we went to like a restaurant. We didn't just fucking get from like the food court in the, in the summers randomly in the park. And like, only one of them was good, and it was all fucking like even ones that like you have, they were like sixty a person for a three course meal. It was just like this, this is like Applebee's level. What the fuck? I have not been to Applebee's in a while. But I'm sure it's terrible. It's not terrible. It's just like what you'd expect to pay for like a $20 steak or just like a $10. Oh, yeah, right. It's what it's just, you'd expect to be. It's like a Bar Louie. It's like a fucking Chili's. Like it's just standard low medium tier restaurant food. It's like Marvel movies. Yeah. It, yeah. It's 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 like fast food. But if you want to wear like a button down shirt with like a checkered pattern. All right. Right. It's a Cole's dress shirt. Right. It's nice, but nothing to write home about. Like Marvel movies. Sorry if that offends me. <laughs> God, dude. I just think it's funny that the the stereotype of just being like the most basic bitch as a man is you're a Marvel fan. Either that or it's it's like Marvel fan or like Star Wars fan. It's like, do you like pumpkin spice and Zodiacs? Well, we've got some movie series for you. We don't discriminate. You're like, you're like we have the male counterpart for you. <laughs> Yeah, that it's yeah, it's, it's it's basically just like Marvel, or like what what else is like a like a like a basic like white dude <laughs> like thing like um I don't know beard products. Uh yes, <laughs> that is very true. Grilling, I feel like um, I'm, most of my friends there as they get older they get more into grilling, which is a total dad. That move. is true, right? Beer. Beer. Oh my god, dude! Beer is the fucking most annoying one. I can't stand it that people make beer their personality, dude. They're fucking like, they, there's people you won't even know. You'll sit down and they'll try to talk to you about the beer of the place. Like, dude, I just got here. I don't need a fucking <laughs> rundown of the beer that's good. It's all gonna taste the same to me. I don't care. I'm drinking it because all I'm right. peer pressuring it. Drinking it because my friends are all over fucking forty and that's all they do. <laughs> I just drink beer all day. Like God, I can't stand it. Like it, I hate the subculture of beer. Oh, um, like sports. <laughs> that is such like, a yeah, like that. That too. Just, fuck. Like all, all they talk about is like sports. <laughs> yeah, I. The no, there's nothing worse than it, it's one thing to like talk about players or talk about what team you think is gonna beat another team or what team's going to the Super Bowl. That's a mildly annoying conversation I can, like, just nod my head to and just kind of zone out. But, like, the one thing I can't stand, the one thing I just want to punch everybody in the face like like a fucking monkey is 
the shit when they talk about their final or final fantasy their uh their fucking fantasy teams i want to fucking murder final everybody fan. at the goddamn buffalo wild wings and they start talking about their fantasy teams like i just i don't know why it just it just instills a primal rage within my soul i don't know why like it's just like it, it, even like if they do it for money so like it, it has a distinctive purpose like if you're good at it you can win money even then i just want to fucking just start swinging i don't know what it is I've never actually done fantasy football. You, it's just like you're guessing of who's the who's gonna make fucking moves and score points. And no, it's right? Just fucking I bad. know because like so, it's it's tantamount know, it's just, to those fucking like yeah. strategy games where it's like it's like oh in the trailers you there's this massive city you get to build and then you fucking can attack other people. Then it's just like you wait two hours to build a farm. <laughs> like right, it's off. like the. the the trailer is like so great. It's like this like CG like 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 epic like cinematic short film, and then it's like the actual game. It's like press a button and it's like a dot. Yeah, it's just I uh, fucking hate it. It's yeah, like, wait wait two hours to build this. I'd rather watch a half hour of some fucking dude in a suit explaining why one team did more points than the other team than just people making up shit. Like oh my god, yeah, dude. Sport culture is like a very American thing. Well, I don't think it's an American. Just thing. Like, just, uh, yeah, football is, but I mean, no, but just like the way we we watch sports in America, and like how much like we care and everything, it's a very American thing. Yeah. Like just like the yeah, I'm gonna just sit down and just have a beer and watch the football game, or like watch the basketball game, or you know watch the baseball game. That's just that's a very American thing. Like just sitting out in the backyard with your TV on the patio and have the neighbors over and watch, you know, watch football. <laughs> yeah. What's crazy to me is like how, like people, how much people give a shit, even at like the recreational level and also at the high school level. Cause like I, I played a shit ton of sports growing up and football was the one I hated the most because like, <laughs> yeah, you, you told me you were, you were at D end. That was really well, on defense. Yeah, but I did center. I, it was weird. I was, I was really tiny, but I could fucking, hit really hard so it's like i could like block people that were twice my size so i was i was it was weird like i'm on the line but i'm like the fuck i'm like a midget compared to all the people that are on the line it was very strange i need to i need to find pictures of me because like it was i look literally like these people's kids um (laughs) but like i remember like i've never because like i i the only sport i was not bad at was actually soccer like i i played goalie and this is it wasn't for a travel team or for a school it's for a rec league but i mean there's still really good people that played the rec leagues um and i we won a championship with me playing goalie so i was i was not bad at being goalie but like all the other stuff i played like basketball i was average at football i was slow so i wasn't i just could hit really hard but i wasn't that fast um but like so like i would but but football is the only like sport i've ever played where i've never won more than two games i've always been on really shitty teams every team that i've been on has never won more than two fucking games and like in high school it was funny because people took that there's people crying every night over this bullshit it was so fucking lame dude (laughs) man i just remember sitting in the locker room like like this is our life. Let's go. And then, like at the end, everybody's like, "What the fuck? What happened?" This life, bleh. like they're just like just sobbing and just like, "Who? who what it's the like, fuck? Why are we gonna get to the dome?" God, dude, everybody's <laughs> so pissed off. It's just like I'm just sitting there, like, I'm, "I'm can I go home? I'm tired. I have to fucking get yeah, up like, and go I'll... to school tomorrow. Can we not do this on a Friday night? Like, what the fuck?" Yeah. Right, you're like, I want to just like go and play Xbox. Yeah, this, <laughs> this shit's fucking lame. I remember, like, I I. In high school, because in when I played for the rec leagues, I I played every game. But in high school, I think I only played like maybe one game. I because like I didn't give a fuck, so it's like I was always like second string. So it's like I would just sit on the bench. And I remember one of the defensive ends got hurt, so like my coach was telling me to go in, and I'm like I'm not running to the. It was like we were down like forty eight to like. 13 or some shit or some score like that and it was like the fourth right. quarter and he was like get in there and i'm just like walking on the field he's like don't you want to play what's wrong with you and i just like i didn't even respond i just walked to the fucking thing and then just we lost and that was that was all i took away from it <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Nice. but what was cool was um my nickname was uh was noodles because i remember there was a lot of gang fights that happened like 
especially like when we played a rival school, like people would legitimately like fist fight each other or stab each other like under the bleachers or like by the concession stand. So for our school, wow, there okay. was like our, our football field was gated. And so like the school was on one side and there was a big fence and a gate and then the football field was on the other. And so um, I was in line getting a cup of noodles because that's what they sold because I didn't want a burger. And so I look over and there's people like there's like a brawl of like 15 people. They're fucking like wailing each other. People are like picking other people up and slamming them on cars. So I was like, fuck the game. I'm watching this. So like in my fucking gear, I walked over <laughs> and I'm eating a cup of yeah. noodles. Like I'm, I'm really close. I didn't realize how close I was. I'm standing super close to these guys beating the shit out of each other. I'm just like eating a cup of noodles like I'm watching a movie. And the cops, because like we had legitimate cops at our school, so they were running over to fucking break that shit up. Um, some of the security staff, like I, I didn't realize I was past the gate. And so what they decided to do is they decided to shut the gate from me or from the from the parking lot to the football field. It's like they were trapping the people that were getting in fights so they couldn't run back into the crowd. And so I'm standing right in the front of the gate and I look over and I'm like banging on the thing. I'm like, let me in. I'm not a part of this. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> Oh man, that sounds really good. Yeah, so that, that was a good story. That was my I nickname like for a little bit, because I was just said eat noodles, watch people. Yeah, beat I just the started fuck out recording again. Um, whoops, <laughs> I kind of just yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll Technical figure it out. problems will over. Here. Um, yeah. So I'm not good at sports at all. Um, Always losing I'm your quite shit. terrible at sports. I'm not an athletic person. I say this to many people. Have I'm fun fit, editing, bitch. but I'm not athletic in the sense that I cannot throw or catch balls. <laughs> I can't, like, I'm not good at, like, like, just sporty things. Like, I'm just, I'm not really that coordinated. Um, yeah, exa- exactly, yeah. That's a good way to put it. I mean, I, yeah, so, soccer I'm dog shit at. Because I don't know how to, like, dribble and kick yeah. the ball. Yeah, like you um, could lift something heavy, but you trip over a rug. Right, exactly. Which I don't. Which I. <laughs> right, which I don't have. Um, so, um, basketball, I'm also dog shit because, like, I just I can't dribble. I mean, I can pass and I can be like a team player to an extent, but I cannot shoot and dribble to save my takes life. Takes a little bit of coordination, so. yeah. <laughs> Not to kick with the fucking front um, toe of your baseball. Foot. I never played. Football, I played when I was like a little kid, but I'm sure I was like still terrible um it's like the little little league i played in like third grade is, is essentially like if you sucked you're playing on the line <laughs> it was like you're just gonna be an o-lineman sorry <laughs> oh. yeah no even if i'm terrible at basketball basketball is so fun i love yeah. playing pickup basketball yeah. Yeah, football was the worst. I think probably of all the sports, I enjoyed basketball the most. That was the most fun. I love bad. I love playing basketball. Yeah. Wait, what is cornhole? I also like dodgeball too. I love. I mean, it's not a real sport, but I like playing it. I like. I like cornhole, but. I, I like there's oh, there's that? a couple of breweries oh, around league? that like they'll have like a think... cornhole <laughs> tournament or like a league that you join, but like I don't know if I want to get that stupid. Like I don't want to commit True. my time. It's <laughs> it's that dumb right. like it's redneck a... game where you throw bean bags in a wooden board and try to get it in the hole or get the stick on the board. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. This professional cornhole. Um, this is a professional fucking best sport for anything, game but I don't know. I just was it's just definitely fun to play capture the flag. That shit was so fun. Which I think you can still drink and play professionally, which is really funny because I swear I saw people on TV with like beer I, I in one hand and beanbag in the other. Games that were the same thing. They just had different names. Like what's Manhunt? <laughs> oh yeah. Do you ever play a Manhunt or a Spotlight? This is one that we played in our neighborhood um, with a bunch of kids. It's like it, you played at night and you establish like a home base and there's one team that defends it and there's one team that has to rush to get on it. So it's like the objective is to just, you know, sneak into the base and get on the the like we usually use like someone's driveway. So like if you can get on the driveway without being touched, then you basically won. So like the I see. I see. if you could like um, if you eliminated more people 
then touch the base then you won but if more people got onto your base then were eliminated then they won so it was kind of like a it was kind of like capture the flag but you didn't have to return to like your other home base but dude we it got to the point where like our games were so fun <laughs> right that yeah. there was one time where like i swear there was like at least like 50 to 100 people and the canine squad got called because people were mad that they were <laughs> their, all their fences were getting great. broken because people were jumping them to like hide and run in their neighborhood and shit or in their house so it got it got you pretty never played infection in real night, life but yeah we, we would play it like almost every infection weekend. is so infection fun. like or tag tag is like spotlight great the fuck tag like and you cannot go wrong with tag i don't think i mean i played it in cod but i haven't played it in a like in real life i don't think so 